there's just got to be a hard break. There's got to be a generation. Yeah. Uh, not even a generation, like a sector of people like Amish-ish type of people yeah. to just break away and to just be like, we, we don't use phones. Yeah. For a long time, I've said, you know, it's going to be kids rebelling against the previous generation, but I'm not sure how much I subscribe to that anymore. I think part of it is going to have to be adults being adults. Today on the show, normies are starting to realize that smartphones have destroyed a generation now that it's too late to do anything about it, of course. Sad how that works out. Stephen Colbert apologizes for a joke he made about the Princess of Wales. Wait until you hear the joke. Here's a hint. It wasn't funny even before we found out she has cancer because Stephen Colbert is not funny. And what does it say about you when you're only attracted to bad boys? All this and more on episode 46 of the Blimey Cow Podcast. I saw this on Twitter and it freaked me out. And apparently this is AI generated. So let me get this straight. You guys are telling me that when you're out of the house for hours, you're comfortable walking around with all that stanky body odor that's been building up on you all day. What's even crazier is that some of you are applying deodorant on top of that odor, which is honestly probably making it worse. The reader context is the reader context here is that this is actually like somebody who's I think sold their image and then the the AI oh, is okay. using their face it's, and everything it says to read only them. the voice and lip syncing are AI generated. It's a service that uses pre-recorded videos with Wet real human odors, actors. But so what is it? but they're making the movements it's not like the they're solution. after you use it, I mean the, the yeah. AI is making the movements. Smell, right? I mean that's still crazy. I guess like they, they're yeah. trying to downplay this but I'm like this is still unbelievable. This is like on Black Mirror where it's like they can sell their image yeah. and then they can make money. Yeah. Um, wow, that is weird. Oh, but you can tell through her eyes that it doesn't. Yeah, it's you, something's there off. Are some, but there, still, there, are, there are little small things, but it does look super real. I mean, if I didn't, if I didn't have the context going into it, I would not have thought about it. You can, yeah, if you watch the eyes, you can tell the eyes are a little funky. But oh boy, that is man. Six we, months from now, yeah, a strange new world. I saw a lot of people uh, commenting and saying that your parents need to get off of Facebook. <laughs> and it's like for this because they're not going to know. Like, whereas I feel like it's it's a lot like when parents get text messages and they don't know not to click the links in the oh, messages. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's not real. I don't know yeah. why we can tell it's not real. Yeah. And they really struggle and they're yeah. starting to learn now. But they they really struggle with knowing what's spam yeah. and like what's going to hack them. Our kids are going to grow up in a world where you like they will be we will teach them you can't trust anything you see. Yeah, in definitely. a way that we never had to learn that. Man, that's crazy. Welcome everybody to the Blimey Cow Podcast. Every Friday we try to make the world a little less messy. My name is Josh. And I'm Jordan. Comment below with your answer to this week's to Josh's question. Uh, would you rather see a dinosaur or Abraham Lincoln in real life? I had to clarify that was your question. <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> it's not up to far. <laughs> If you, if you want a free Blimey Cow t-shirt, then head over to supportblimeycow.com because when you join, you get a free Blimey Cow shirt as our way of saying thank you. You guys are what make it possible for us to make this show. So we give our supporters all kinds of fun stuff, including an exclusive segment of the podcast. Which we just filmed. We did just film Our it. longest it ever. Fun. It was. It was like a little over 20 minutes. It was really. Head over to supportblimeycow.com today to join the best community on the internet. We want to say thank you to Lija Willoughby. Have uh, Halavi, Havali, Havali, Havala, Havala Ep, uh, Liberty Williams, and Isaiah Anders. All four of them became supporters this very week. Thank you so much. All right, Jordan, and they are back. They are back. Oh, oh good. Here we go. Shrewd Defense sponsoring another episode. Make A sure great we, comic. I want to make sure I'm. You can make see sure it. Can you see this? Okay, good. It, it, I was just afraid that the reflections were going to make it, it is hard reflecting. to see. reflecting. There you so okay. we, we, we got, we got video of okay, this thing. Okay. You'll see the video, too. This is a comic made by some uh, fans of the show yes. who got in touch and wanted to sponsor. So a shrewd defense on one side. Flip it over, and you've got the marvelous Mr. Motley. True Defense is a high fantasy tale of one man's fight to free his village from the devastating oppression of dragons. And marvelous Mr. Motley, big top takedown, is a superhero story where the hero must contest with circus trapeze artists. I loved that one in particular. They're both really good, but the, the marvelous Mr. Motley, I don't know why, I just I connected with this one for some reason. Yeah. I really liked it. Yeah, so if you want to... Uh, 
uh, support some fans of the show. Great artwork, uh, too. I mean, seriously, like, I, yeah, it, it looks really good. I mean, it is very, it's, it's amazing. I, I, I'm, I wish I was skilled enough to do something like this. This is something too, where if you're like into like fantasy lore type stuff, uh, you're really going to enjoy this because like this is this is one of those where it's like a, like helpful notes here to tell you here's how these locations and places and things yeah. are pronounced and what they mean when when the characters say them and stuff. So if you like that kind of stuff, I always yeah they've enjoy done it. A, they've done a good job. With you got to check it out. You can get a bundle that includes some stickers as well. And they've got holographic stickers they too. They do. All right, taking me back to my Beanie Baby card days <laughs> where I always wanted the holographic, holographics. Yeah. If you want to check it out, go to thewhimsicalsort.com. That's the whimsical sort. Com. All right, let's get to top stories. Jordan, we did it. We hit a thousand subscribers on the Blimey Cow Clips channel. Incredible. And now we just need to get the public watch time up to 4,000 hours. We're halfway there. That's going to take a while uh, because the point of the clips is that they are shorter. So we can either go like live stream on that channel or like post one episode of the podcast there or just wait. But it does seem like more people uh, are watching our clips every week now. I, I've noticed, I think it's a combination of just momentum in general, but also I'm getting good at coming up with thumbnails. Yeah, I looked at it and you, you are. I, I try to pay attention to if we mention like a like a famous person or something in a clip, I just put their, their likeness. Mm -hmm. Like uh, last week you were talking about comedy and stuff and we mentioned Dave Chappelle. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I put Dave Chappelle in the... Yeah, I you saw know. that. And so uh, it's nice because it'll a lot of the clips we post will say, hey, this was the one of ten uh, in terms of view time or two of ten. So it's uh, it seems to be going well. People like it. At Blimey Cow Clips is where you can find uh, those clips. And uh, I guess we'll just every week... Get that watch time up. Every week, I just, uh, for like two or three hours, I just sit there and export them all out and make the thumbnails, and I think, is this worth it? And then every week, I go back and check, and one or two of them, a lot of people watch. Hundreds so, of millions of views. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Appreciate it. YouTube.com slash at Clips. Go subscribe today. So, a non-internet top story is that our playground is done, Josh. We are finally done. We built the climbing wall, and then we also we, we mentioned that we were gonna. Yeah, it was actually last week it, it, when we started. Yeah, it was. I think. You, it, yeah, we did it that day, and then we you came back for two days day. after that. Two days. Yeah. Was, yeah. Because I skipped a day because it rained or something. And the next day, and then the next day, I'm pretty sure. Okay. I'm pretty positive. Well, we got the um we got the climbing wall done. That was like just one of those random projects. We didn't quite know what we wanted to do with it. And then it just ended up being a rope with a ladder, yeah. um, which really wasn't too difficult. Other than the fact that we put it at a slight um, angle, so we had to figure out how to yeah, had puzzle to cut the, it the, the wood in there, which was fun. But the very fun thing that we did, that didn't even take that long, but the very fun thing that we did was built the, the PVC telephone yes. system that, you know, if you grew up at old school parks, they there was a time, a nice, very precious time in life where they were considerate enough to actually make these PVC telephones that you could talk from one park, one side of the park to the other to well, just they were random probably made kids. of metal at the parks. I don't know. They broke so easily. If, they, if it didn't... Ours isn't uh, going to break. It, it, probably not. And if it does, we can... We made it easily we, fixable. Yeah, we know how to fix it. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it works great. I mean, I can literally talk like this, and Josh can hear me perfectly. On the other side of the playground. It's crazy. It's like, it's it's far away, up high, and I'm down low. It's really it's pretty neat. Pretty amazing. It's really neat, and the boys loved it. The boys yeah, love it. Yeah, that was the one thing that when they went and saw that, that I could really see them like get excited about, about like that particular yeah. thing at the, at the age that they're at. Where yeah. It's like, wow, that's, this is awesome. But, you know, besides like trampolines and things like that, it's like, oh wow, we can talk to each other. When you were talking to Isaac and it, he started first like waving at the telephone and you said <laughs> hi to him. And I said, no, no, he's, he's down there. And he, Isaac looked, he looked down, he goes, you, you talk to him. I'm going to watch. And so he <laughs> just like sat there and watched you talk. And I, he was trying to understand how it all worked. It is really cool. It's really neat. It's it, it was like the one project for the playground when I had the idea. I was like, I know that's doable, but I, I didn't really think we'd ever actually get it done. Dug the holes, got it all done. And Jordan, really, you helped figure out how to get that piping 
all the way down the playground, but in a way that looks nice. Yeah. I wouldn't, if I had done that by myself, I wouldn't have made it look nice. Like so. It's just, yeah, I mean, the key is just have everything always touching as much wood as possible yeah. so kids can't grab it yeah. and break it. But now, yeah. now it's so secure, it's crazy. You think of so many things that I don't, I wouldn't have thought of because you've had to reason through this stuff at various points when you're building things, so. Yeah, or I've just watched people do it, and I and yeah. in questions like I've had, I see them just do things, and I and I I don't even, and I just say, oh, do you do that so that because you know, or or when you're screwing wood together, any place that you want the wood to be contacting as many parts of another piece of wood right. as possible, and screw it down in every place that it's contacting, yeah. so it's like one piece. So then you just kind of start to think through, like, oh, it's important for everything to always yeah. be touching. Yeah. It's, you know, it's important, like, when we were doing the ladder thing, to have a base in the ground, yeah. even if it's not concreted down, but to have something that's anchored down. Like, that's I, important. I at least knew that, like, when I but bought that, the wood. Well, exactly, because you saw when Eddie did the, when when Eddie built the stairs, he built that base yes. thing for the stairs. And so yeah. then you just think, oh, okay, I'll remember that next time. Yeah, exactly. It's just, like, piecing all this stuff together. Um, so, so th there are things I still want to do with the playground, uh, but it, for all intents and purposes, it is done. I'm going to put some stuff on the back of it. That's like climbing stuff for me. Adult thing. Ad yeah. Adult, like a uh, gym type exercise. I've got some like rock wall mount things uh, that I'm going to put, um, that, that like go across the whole bridge. They're going to go across the like whole bridge. Yeah. It. We're, we're going to put out a video next month, probably, uh, yeah. showing you guys a, a tour of it. Leaves um, will be on the trees, nice shade, so it won't yes. be so blinding. Exactly. And we should just film an episode out there. Yeah. That would, that would be, be hilarious. That we so, could film an episode, two cameras, me on one telephone, you on the other one. That's great. <laughs> it's like, hey, guys, <laughs> this is way filming too remotely today. Way too complicated. Uh, okay. All right. Um, there you go. So thank you all for... Um, Allowing us to be able to do that. Yes. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Christian Meme Review. getting God's approval on a new batch of memes. <laughs> I would have loved to just been on that set. Can you imagine? No, I can't. That was back in a time where things seemed magical. Now they don't. Now yeah. everyone feels like they are on a set of something. They should have they really should have sat back and thought we're making the last great movies. Right That's now. what they should have thought and they didn't. They probably didn't. They, they had just, no idea. They probably thought this is going to revolutionize movies and instead it just has never been done again. Yeah, it's like no, you you guys did the last good one and then it all is over. So that was nice. That is nice. Very... I love the tearjerker ones. I know. I, I, you know, the funny ones, I'm starting to get annoyed at the funny ones. <laughs> the tearjerker ones, all I look at now. There you I go. don't even know if I have tearjerker ones well, or not. Well, let's take a look at what Jordan brought this week. Uh, the transcendent purity of God. It, it connotes transcendence. He is other. He's different. He's in a class by himself. <laughs> he's unique. Your meme energy is going to now start to shift now that you're, yeah. you're becoming a father. Like, oh, look at that cute kid. That's hilarious. Watching a Bible thing. <laughs> We usually don't pick up hitchhikers. But I'm going to go with my instinct on this one. <laughs> Saddle up, partner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's a funny movie. I've never seen it. Hey! Hi! Welcome! You didn't dust your baseboard? <laughs> There's actual trash in your trash can. Are you Neanderthals? When's the last time you vacuumed? Do you even care about us? <laughs> One throw pillow? Are you a monster? One candle for this whole room. No wonder it smells like a barn. <laughs> Unorganized. Unorganized. <laughs> Unorganized. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. Yeah. I always think about that when I'm cleaning up the house for people coming over. I'm like, do I? L let me think about the last time I went somewhere. Do I remember looking around at anything? No, I didn't look at anything. <laughs> no, you nothing. Why would I? Yeah, what I kind know. of freak would do that? Let's get to the message. Ooh. Dear Jordan and Josh, I always have bad luck with dating, and now I just want to be completely done with all men. My best friend li that's what the mainstream wants you to think. My best friend likes to joke that my type is red flagged, but honestly, sh she's right. 
I'm attracted to broken men because I like to fix people and good guys are just boring. I always end up dating the bad ones, even though I know they're not the kind of men I want to marry, but I always think that I can fix them into who I want them to be. I'm so sick of dating awful men, but I'm just not attracted to the good ones. Do you have any ideas how to help me fix my standards? See, this is, this is a question where you need, this is like meeting a girl when you're 30. Okay. And you didn't. You didn't meet the girl when you're in college. You didn't meet the girl when you're in high school. You met a girl in a snapshot in time. You just met her when you're 32. Okay. And you have no context of who she is. You just see this weird behavior. And you're like, I can never truly know you Mm -hmm. because I didn't grow up with you. I don't know your family dynamics. You don't live with your parents anymore. Like... Uh, not that oh, I, I want to psychoanalyze your life, but I do. I need to understand. I can tell you some of the family dynamics. Clearly doesn't have a good relationship with her father. Right. But I wish I knew. See, normally these messages, there's like a, they give a little bit of background because they know in their heart, yeah. like, I know this stems from this, but yeah. they're not really, they're not yeah. making the connection. They want us to make the connection. Yeah. They didn't give us anything. So I think they're just, this girl's completely clueless as to why. Yeah. Uh but yeah, like Josh is saying, oftentimes this goes back to uh, your your, your father problems that you yeah. had with your father. Yeah, it's a generational curse, Josh. It'll just keep going around. Why just do you, keep going around? Why do you think if you don't have a good relationship with your dad, why why do girls do this? What, I don't know. What, and why why is that like an obvious thing that you when you see it, you yeah. know? Okay, well, clearly, I, is there just something about like not having that? security blanket of like knowing that you can trust that your dad is going to be there for it, you. No, that- it's comforting is what it is because even though your father was bad uh-huh. to you, uh-huh. it's yeah. all you've known. So to break out of that, it's just like an abusive relationship. It's like, well, yeah. I this is what I know. I know that he does this bad stuff to yeah. me and then things are better. And yeah. then it happens again, but I know I it's better. It's like it, it, things are bad, but I'm at least here. Yeah, it's you you are familiar with it. Right. So it's it's very hard for any human to break right. out of anything of a pattern that is yeah. built in their brains. Yeah. It's just we so we true. like to go autopilot. Even yeah. if it's the hardest route and it's ruining our lives, we have to go on autopilot because it's the easiest thing for our brains to do. We've wired in those programs. It's hard to take a program out literally and re-import something new. That is like the hardest thing for a person to do in their life. Have you have you ever seen the movie Goodwill Hunting? No. Who's in that? Uh Matt Matt Damon and uh, Robin Williams. Oh really? Yeah, and he's like Matt, Matt Damon is like this genius kid, but he behaves like like a goofball. Like he he doesn't he doesn't take responsibility for how intelligent he is. And so he goes to a therapist, Robin Williams. And so the end of the movie is basically Robin Williams trying to get him to understand that the things like his parents leaving or getting divorced, or whatever it is in the movie. Yeah. It's not his fault. And so that's like the famous scene at the end is Robin Williams just repeating to him over and over again, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's okay. not your fault. And at first, Matt Damon's like, come on, stop stop messing with me. Come on, stop. Just, no, seriously, stop. Stop saying that. Stop it. And eventually he starts like hitting Robin Williams, and then eventually just breaks down crying or whatever when he finally realizes, like, he, was, was, he was a kid. This is not... Yeah. I had no, nothing I did was the reason that any of these things happen. Yeah, it sounds like a good movie. I should watch that. Yeah. Um, but exactly that, what this is. It, it what kinda, I'm saying. That's what it kind of reminded me of. Is, is, is if, you, if you don't have a good relationship with your parents, you somehow, in your head, I think that what it is is you think, well, they had me, so at some point they were good, but mm-hmm. now I'm here and they're not good. Yeah, that's such a good point. And I can, you know, even, oh man, this is what, it's it's honestly kind of freaks me out a little bit. Because if ever Kelly and I are even like slightly talking contentiously to each other about yeah. something, I can I can look across the room and I can see it on <laughs> Isaac's face. Like I can see yeah. that, that just like that, that low grade just like... Why? Why are they talking like that? And I, yeah, yeah, in a way that before we had kids, I wouldn't have even thought about like, oh, you know what? We're talking a little bit elevated right now. Yeah, exactly. You don't. You, there's no reason to think about that because you can yeah. handle it. Right, right. In your right, weird way. Right. 
but a kid can't. And they just yeah. always just blame themselves. Yeah, for exactly. some reason. They, it's, it's, why is that default kids? I, I don't know. I think I think it's because in in a kid's head they understand mom and dad were here before I got here. Yeah, that might be it. And now they're having an argument and maybe I, about something that is regarding something and, that I have right, or and, me or right us. and that's why especially if it has something to do with the boys it's like okay we got it. we'll we'll talk about yeah, this later yeah. because yeah it's it, and it's so it's so dumb cuz you think before you have kids you're like oh, I'm, I'll never I'll never do that I'll never do that and then it's just like it's so easy yeah. oh yeah it's so because there's so much going on in a day it's like hey we need to talk about this right now because if not I'm going to forget we need to mention this blah blah blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, but some people take that a lot farther than other people. But even if you're like really trying, it's hard. So I say that to say, you know, it's tough being a parent, um, but it's also very, very difficult being a kid, especially in a situation where your parents weren't doing the best job. You got to fix that first. You got to figure all that out first before you can find out why you you just are attracting these Han Solo types in your mm-hmm. life all the time. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. I always say I never know what the answer is for you, but the first step is to just be aware yeah. that that is why. Yeah. And then if you're just aware of it, yeah. then it will change over time because you, you, you're you acknowledging what it is. You're not just living in this mystery. Yeah. Let's get the question of the week. Let's see if I got my 50-50 split on my last week's question. You know, I bet that your question for this week is, is going to get a 50-50 split. Watch it. I, your your weird question about dinosaurs and Abraham why, Lincoln. I don't know why that Watch. came to my head. I just thought it was... We'll talk about my question in a minute. Okay, so the question was, would you rather learn to fly a plane or drive a motorcycle? What do you think? Before we scroll down, what do you think the split is? Instinct. Oh, the split. I voted on this, so I'm not going to give a, give you oh, a... Oh, you, so but you it was what, it what I be? thought. Okay. It was what I thought. Is that what you thought, 70-30 split? No, that is actually kind of surprising to me. Interestingly, one of the top comments was, I think that you could monetize flying a plane more than riding a motorcycle. See, people are so in the mindset now of like, how can I monetize Monetization. This? Which, just that that word is, is uh, that monetization is such a modern word, even though it's existed for yeah. a long time. Yeah. We're always thinking, how can I make a YouTube channel yeah. on flying a plane? And, and maybe this person has gone down the rabbit hole of, like I have of, if you're learning to fly a plane, just film yourself doing it. You'll get like hundreds yeah. of thousands of views. Yeah. It's cr- if you know how to edit and you're a decent personality, yeah. it's hilarious. If I were to fly in a plane, that means I would have to be up in the sky. If I drive a motorcycle, I could ride that thing on the ground at five miles an hour. So in my head, if oh, I have I to do one of these two very dangerous things... Yeah. I will do the one that I can be on the ground going as slow as possible. But the only way you're flying a plane is if uh, you, you're, you're going, going fast enough to get on up in the sky. And then you got to bring that thing back down or you're done. Yeah. I don't think so, man. I've seen a lot of stuff go wrong with planes. But, like, the only catastrophic thing is if the engine blows and yeah. there's smoke and you can't see. Uh, but that is so rare to happen. Mm-hmm. But it, it happens. But even if, you know, if your plane malfunctions, you can coast down and land. If you're like in a yeah. small plane, you're not going to die. Did you, d- would you fly a plane? Yeah, Is that your, it would your be fly pick? a plane. Okay. I, I'll ride with you. Drive a motorcycle. It's like, I don't know, I ride a bike. Like, I feel like that's the same danger level. Sure. It's actually more dangerous. Probably is. Because <laughs> uh, cars are flying past you. Yeah. But the funny thing is if... This is what's funny about me on a motorcycle. If I had a motorcycle, I would have no problem driving like at stoplights between cars to get to the front. Mm. Like I was like I ha- mm. I would have no uh and that's a that's a law here now you can do in Tennessee, which it wasn't before. But it makes sense. I was explaining to Josh and Dad who were like, "Why are motorcyclists do this?" And I was like, "Well, it, because they're not visible." So, it's actually safer for them to if everyone stopped at a stoplight for them to go in between the lanes to get through all the cars to get to the front to be like, hey, I exist. Don't yeah. hit me. A huge place that motorcyclists get hit is when cars are texting and they're looking down and then they're at a stoplight. They not, break. Yeah. They're not looking to see that a motorcyclist. They need to get okay. crushed and killed. Fair enough. You you just changed my mind about that. Yeah, that's why they do that. Okay. That makes sense. So I would have no, I mean, I do that when I'm driving, when I'm riding a bike. I would even do that. Yeah. 
if you're downtown and you need to get through right. a light, you're not going to stop behind cars. Like that's yeah, you're like going to die. Yeah. You're you're a sitting duck out there. And you can actually accelerate faster than cars on a, in a on a bicycle. Is that right? From from a dead stop, if oh. you're good at it, you could yeah you could easily accelerate from a car and then get get over if that's what you need to do like easy. Okay. Especially on a downhill, it's like the easiest thing in the world. That, that makes sense. Could you accelerate uh, faster in a plane? No, I don't think so. <laughs> you couldn't actually. <laughs> you could go faster than an airplane for a minute at yeah. least, for a good minute. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, this week's question is, boy, uh, would you rather see a dinosaur or Abraham Lincoln in real life? Am I answering that now? No, no, no. no, no. Wait, we'll wait, talk wait, about wait. this next week. We'll talk okay. about this next okay. week. Uh, I mentioned this because, uh, assuming that I keep it in, uh, I I watched Jurassic Park this week, and I wanted to oh, review it for okay. Did It Waste My Life? Uh, Did YouTube quick. like recommend some like Abraham Lincoln stuff to you? No, so I just was, was thinking of who somebody who is somebody in history that everybody recognizes and would be interesting to see in in person. And the first name that came to my head was Abraham Lincoln. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's good. Let's. I bet that's a 50-50 split right there, Josh. Deep thoughts. Here we go. From Politico, Jordan, it's causing them to drop out of life. How phones <laughs> warped Gen Z. A that's so a good picture. I like that picture. A social psychologist, Jonathan Haidt, warns social media is fueling a mental health crisis. <laughs> Thank you Thank for you believe it. telling me that. See, I don't like these stupid studies because it's like, hey, we have the answer. Now we can definitively tell you what you have confirmed every second of, your, of the day in I your know. life. But we are the ones who can confirm it, and it's now true. Through his research, Height found that teen mental health has dramatically worsened after iPhone usage became widespread and Instagram was created. While he blames Instagram for causing the most initial damage of the new era, particularly in fueling declining mental health for girls, he now sees a new graver threat. TikTok is arguably the worst consumer product ever invented. Uh, oh, now we're getting to the yeah, banning. Now, now, Josh, getting, now we see the okay, propaganda. Now it, now it makes sense why all of a sudden it's okay to talk about. Without action from parents, lawmakers, schools, and tech companies, the youth mental health crisis will continue unabated, he warns. And there could be some unexpected political fallout. As Hype puts it, with a growing sense of anxiety and dislocation, people may become more open to an authoritarian leader who promises to stop the chaos. Oh, okay. It seems a little weird. And, you know? <laughs> it's like, they, it's like it? they're clearly seeing something that we're like, well, actually, it's not. They're, they're seeing what we're seeing, where we say, you know, everything's getting so bad. Uh -huh. Like, wouldn't it just be nice in some sick way? Uh -huh. Wouldn't it just be relieving if some just strong man kind of person was like, guys, this isn't happening anymore? Yeah. You think, wow, that's relieving. The, I know this might not has, be the best yeah. for, like, over time, but, like, to just have that relief. Well, yeah, because when you see so much weird, like, injustice and all these different things, there is some there is some part of you that just says, well, th the system under its current setup is not working. So what's the difference so, if just one so, guy comes in and says we're done? Yeah, it just says, as long as he agrees with me. Right, and then we're back then, to a king and, then, and, 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 then, so and then everything can be reset. What, what does that have to do with... Oh, they don't the see the, the thing is they don't actually care about any of this. Right. They don't care yeah, exactly. about the people. They just only care about it because now they're worried about China. They Now yeah. they're trying to do that false flag yeah. or whatever about yeah. like, hey, China's like, going to... We got to get rid of TikTok. We got to make sure that uh, our political people don't, don't lose. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's, what, that's what I'm saying. And yeah. that's what's sick is that the whole point of this is that nobody is taking th what kids need into account. And now it's like... They're hey, just worried the, about the leaders of yeah, the world. Yeah. They're not like, worried the, about the kids. The, the, well, the kids are suffering, but also they're going to become more stupid. Yeah. And uh, it, it's going to be all become so chaotic that people we don't like are going to win elections. Yeah, it always comes back <laughs> to that for these weirdos. <laughs> So, so now it's okay to talk about this because it's so obvious that this is happening now uh, that it can be they can use it they can use that fear of we can all clearly see something is going on here with the kids uh, they can use that fear to say hey well we have to enact these specific changes that we happen to agree with we have to ban TikTok we have to yeah. stop these people give them more power blah more blah control. blah I mentioned on a previous episode of the podcast that uh, 
I was reading that book, Hold On to Your Kids, and it was talking about how how bad social media is for kids because it trains them to think that talking in real life and talking on the internet with your friends are the yeah. same thing, and they couldn't be more different. Uh, it's because when you're talking to someone in person, there's a little bit of a dance going going on. You're taking their social cues. You're taking their facial uh, cues. You're deciding how much of yourself you're going to show based on the the reactions that you're being given. Whereas online, it's literally just text on a screen. Hey, what's going on? You know what I yeah. mean? There's no nuance to it. Have you noticed, Jordan, I've called you more often lately? You have. I'd call mom more often, too. At a certain point, well, I text with mom more than I text with you. But it, normally, if I get to a point, I'm like, I'm just going to call mom. And yeah. so, mom, I think finally this week has finally stopped freaking out when I call her. Because <laughs> she always will be like, yeah, hey, hey what's wrong? What's wrong? I'm like, mom, I will text you if something is wrong before I call you. I wouldn't do that to yeah, you. Yeah. I'll be like, 911 emergency. And then I'll call. <laughs> I just I I'm realizing for for so long I didn't like talking on the phone, but I'm realizing that texting is just so. It, it also takes it, it. It's also about the amount of times I have to like pull out my phone and yeah, look at it true. when I'm with the kids and stuff. Yeah, you know. Uh, so it's easier just to say, "Hey guys, I need to make a, a phone call real quick," than it is to say, "Hey, sorry, hang on, I'm trying to text Uncle Jordan back." Yeah, exactly. That's true. And then you just look like okay. An sorry, idiot. what's going on? Yeah. Hang on, hang on. He texts me back. Hang on. He's, yeah, exactly. he's working on the downstairs. I gotta, t I gotta text him right now, or I'm, it's gonna be awesome. So yeah, hear exactly. From him again. Exactly. Th I'm saying that's what I'm saying. That's what I was saying like a few podcasts ago. There's just gotta be a hard break. There's gotta be a generation. Yeah. Uh, not even a generation, like a sector of people, like Amish ish type of people, yeah. but not, not Amish, but that idea to just break away and to just be like, we we don't use phones. Yeah. We use everything else. We use cars. We use everything else. We use all. We can use YouTube to look up how to do things, but we don't use like it's very limited, like of what do, we do with. Do it. you think there will be like devices specific for specific purposes, or maybe like the, I don't know. How, how's I have it, no how's idea. I was like gonna look. I don't know because I know they have like those dumb phones now that are like smartphones, but they just make phone calls and do text messages. They don't have apps on them or anything like that. There's one really good company called Brick. Yeah, um, I've seen them advertised, where you have to actually physically scan something on the brick, and it turns your phone into a brick phone. Okay, but like you can literally just make calls and texts. Okay, that's all you can do. Yeah, and then. You put you leave that brick at home that you scanned, and so your phone is permanently a brick phone from then on. Like your smartphone then turns into just being able to call and text, and that's it. You can't look up anything online. You can't do anything like that. So when you go to the grocery store, you physically have locked your phone to only be able to do those two things. Oh, interesting. So then when you come back home, then you can scan it, and then it works again as a regular phone. It's a genius idea. That's awesome. I've actually wanted to reach out to them and be like, can it, if I did end up doing the sponsor. podcast again, the If Them podcast, oh, yeah. I was like, what sponsor would make sense? Yeah. Like, that makes sense yeah, to me. Yeah, that would be and good. Maybe I could reach out to them. You should. You out. should. Like, hey, just, you know. You should. You don't have to pay me that much. <laughs> just like, <laughs> I'm going to do the show. I'm anyway. doing it anyways. Yeah. No, but your average your average user who is exact, just that, uh, your average user. Uh-huh. You're still a user. You're still using right. it. You can't get out of it. Yeah. It all really comes back to, I do think there will be like an almost Luddite generation. And maybe, honestly, for a long time I've said, you know, it's going to be a, 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 a kids rebelling against the previous generation. But I'm not sure how much I subscribe to that anymore. I, I think part of it is going to have to be adults being adults and mm -hmm. just saying, I know that growing up there were lots of things my parents said I couldn't do and I was always like that is not fair I'm not going to be that kind of parent well I'm going to be that kind of parent times 10 right now and say you, yeah. you don't get a smartphone until you're 18 yeah. because it's not safe and it's not that we don't need we don't need laws saying oh you you can't have social media until you're 16 mm -hmm. or 18 or whatever all this dumb stuff they're trying to do uh, you can't have a smartphone or whatever. It's literally, like, if you have to have a law saying your kid can't have social media, you have that no should parents. be such yeah, that should be such common sense. Like you're already lost. Like if you need a law for that, yeah, your society is gone. Deep thoughts. Now let's move on <laughs> to just. I want to know if Jurassic Park wasted your life. 
Speaking of adults having to be adults, I watched Jurassic Park for the very first time this week. I don't. I, I grew up loving dinosaurs. I'm not sure why I never saw this movie, but I uh, loved it. And I just had a few thoughts I wanted to share about this movie because I, I was surprised by how much, not only that I, I enjoyed the movie, but how much I agreed with it resonated. How much I resonated with it. So it's, and with modern society, I have I have, I've saw it once, but I fell asleep. Okay, as usual. Well, it's just a story. It's a story about a, 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 some scientists who start want to start a dinosaur amusement park called Jurassic Park. Okay, so they clone the dinosaurs. They figure out how to do it. Right, and they want to get the okay from some archaeologists so that. You know they can get the proper funding or the government approval or or whatnot. They they want people to vouch for them, so they bring some archaeologists to uh, the park mm. to take a look at it. That's the whole movie. There's maybe like seven actors in the whole movie. I mean, there's like the the movie is just about them getting trapped inside of Jurassic Park when the dinosaurs kind of break free, and then then trying to be safe. That's basically the okay. movie. It's not like you know you grow up thinking, oh, Jurassic Park, and there's a park, and there's all this stuff that happens. Not really. It takes place over the course of like a day or two. The story is about an Indiana Jones type who who doesn't become a true man until he realizes that he's ready to have kids. That's basically the story. Hmm. The idea of the movie is that there is always going to be somebody looking towards the future, and that person needs to be you. So the the guy the the scientist wanting to make this theme park, they're like, oh look, we can we can make all this money or whatever. But you have this archaeologist type who's like, I don't want to have a family, I don't want to have kids, I don't like kids. I would rather go like dig up old bones and and mm. and live in the past. He comes across these kids in the movie and he ends up having to protect them because when, you know, man starts screwing around with science, the first people in trouble are the children. And mm. so he has it Sounds to, familiar, yeah, Josh. He has to learn to protect the kids and so the whole movie is about him learning to be to, be, to take on that protector role. And then there's also there's also um, another kind of side theme of the movie, which is that men and women both need each other. Like anytime one of the main characters kind of sets out on their own, they're immediately in huge danger. And they're, they're only able to overcome the, the dinosaurs and the situation when they work together as a team. Mm -hmm. I was really surprised by it. I didn't, you know, I watched Jaws and Jaws was like kind of what I expected it was going to be. It's yeah. like a shark movie. Right. That there's kinda, no greater Yeah, there's there's a few things, yeah. but not it's not it was just more like a scary movie. Jurassic Park is actually like kind of like a it is actually kind of a scary yeah. movie. I think it's a good first scary movie. Like as I was watching, I was like, this'll this will be the first scary movie I show Isaac, yeah. I think. Because it's dinosaurs, so you know it's not like some goofy like monsters that you could Imagine in your head, maybe these things are out there when somewhere. When I'm in the ocean, like, a shark's going to kill me. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. Dinosaurs are like, okay, they're they're gone. The whole point of the movie is that they should still be gone, and this is why they're gone. Um, yeah. But anyways, I just, uh, I really like Jurassic Park. It did not waste my life. I'm going to have to watch it again, Josh, and try and keep my eyes open. I cannot <laughs> do it. The only movie I can stay awake for, Slumdog Millionaire, I knew, Interstellar. I knew you were going to say Slumdog Millionaire. It doesn't matter if it's 11 p.m. <laughs> And I'm and I turn on Interstellar. I will. I can. I have to turn it off so I go yeah. to sleep. Thank you for divulging or uh, indulging. You indulging. I yeah, divulged. I you love, indulged. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> we haven't done an NPC update in a while, Jordan. No. But you're gonna love this. So what did he make? Like some kind of cancer joke at some point? Like has she, no? Had she like gone? Give me the little update on her. Okay. She had gone missing and yeah. people were wondering where no, she was. Nobody had seen. Kate Middleton in a while, the Who princess is of Wales. This? She's the princess of Wales. That's all I know. But did I she know marry some I don't know. Okay. I don't know what it means. I think she probably married somebody. She I don't know. She married somebody. So people had started to speculate about where she was. Okay. Um, but then it turns out that she's battling cancer. That's right. I saw the little video briefly. So now all these people making jokes and stuff are like, oh geez. Uh and you have uh, types like uh, Stephen Colbert who's got to address the backlash over his Kate Middleton joke. I do not make light of somebody else's tragedy. Okay, so so the NPC update is that a bunch of people are upset that Stephen Colbert uh, made a joke about Kate Middleton. So yeah, I don't watch Stephen Colbert. 
Uh, I had to I had to scroll through this article to find even where the joke was that he made. Are you ready for this yeah. joke? Yeah. This is what he said. The kingdom has been all a flutter about the seeming disappearance of Kate Middleton, Colbert said at the time. Well, now internet sleuths are guessing that Kate's absence may be related to her husband, the future king of England, William, having an affair. According to tabloids, when Kate supposedly confronted him about it, he laughed it off, saying there was nothing to it. Always a good response when your wife accuses you of cheating. And then I'm sure that they put the little laughter sign on and the audience laughed at that uh-huh. to tell you it was a joke. Okay, so this was almost completely, it wasn't unrelated, but I thought that he had like accidentally hit it right on the nose. No, and no. he was like, oh, shoot. No, he was literally just making one of his not funny jokes. Oh, okay. And so now he's having to apologize. We do a lot of shows. I tell a lot of jokes. I tell jokes about, <laughs> that's debatable, about a lot of different things, mostly about what everybody's talking about. For the last six weeks to two months, everybody's been wondering about Kate Middleton. Two weeks ago, we did some jokes about that mystery. When I made those jokes, that upset some people. Even before her diagnosis was revealed, I can understand that a lot of my jokes have upset people in the past and some of my jokes will upset people in the future, but there's a standard that I try to hold myself to, and that is I do not make light of someone else's tragedy. I make jokes that might offend some people. What do you, what do you want from me? All right. <laughs> Like, no, you don't make jokes at all, dude. You're not funny. That's not what I thought he was going to have said at all. Like, I, I, yeah. I don't even see how he's apologizing for that. Well, he's not really. In a well, way. That's what was weird. He <laughs> wasn't. But, like, he is, but he's not. He's being told he needs to apologize for a, a not joke, and then he's not apologizing for the not yeah, joke. Yeah, that's what it is. So are people appeased with his apology? No, I think they were angry about it. Too. Okay. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. Anyways, we are praying for the Princess of Wales. Hopefully she'll be okay. Uh, we are not praying for Stephen Cole. Well, I guess we can pray for our enemies. <laughs> yeah, we are supposed to pray for our enemies, and I would say he is an enemy. <laughs> the prince of, Princess of Wales is not an enemy, though. As far, I don't know what she does in her Shh, free time with like, just the politics. someone out there. I don't know. I think it's only interesting because they, like, marry with he like that she marries somebody else that's yeah. royalty and everyone loves that it's only interesting because it's like the history of it which i i, 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 think I, so. I appreciate that it's like yeah there's like this line of and it goes back to all, all these generations and stuff that, that that's kind of interesting mm-hmm. but on on some level because of the because of how much we see of it now because of tv and the internet and yeah stuff, it's like i these are just more celebrities yeah, that's so true. They're just more celebrities, they're just more but they're not. They're it's it's a historical thing. Yeah. Anyways, NPC update. There you go. All right, it gave me hope. Last night I'm going out to feed Tucker and Nora. Tucker is like my Great Pyrenees. Nora's my Great Pyrenees, but Tucker's like the working animal. Mm-hmm. Nora is the pet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nora is the entertainment for Tucker while he's doing what he does. Nora doesn't know what's going on half the time. Yeah, but uh, Tucker was like just laying down, and which is fine. He was laying down in his spot, and I'm going out to feed him, and he just wouldn't get up. And I was like, Oh no, what's going on? Mm. So I go down there, and I'm like, Hey, let's get up. What are we doing? And he just didn't want to get up. And he, and and I could tell he's such a good dog. He could, he knows he comes to me when I say come. He always obeys. And even if he doesn't, I'm like, Tucker, seriously, come. And then he'll just walk over. Uh, and he'll like kind of look like, I'm sorry. And he like does this like m- smiling squint thing where he's like, <laughs> I don't, I'm not in trouble, right? I'm like, no, it, you just needed to get, get over here. It's fine. Uh, but he's so obedient. So I could tell he's like, no, look, I, Jordan, I physically can't get up. Oh, buddy. And so he knew he should be getting up, but he couldn't. And, uh, I felt so bad because he, when I walked over to be like, hey, are you okay? Like, what's going on? He was like, oh, am I in trouble? Like, I'm sorry. Oh, like, and I was like, dude, no, I just wanted to make, I just want to make sure you're okay. Like, you're, if nothing's going on. Like, you're fine. It's fine. And so I was like, it looked like his leg was, um, his leg is, uh, what was injured, it looked like, but I couldn't, I wasn't exactly sure. He really wouldn't get up. He did get up once when he first saw me and he was like hunched weird. And mm. so I was like, it looks like it's his leg. But initially I was like, is he sick? Cause like I just saw him a couple hours ago and he looked totally fine. Did he eat something, mm. uh, that was poisonous? And so I didn't know what to do. So, uh, I assessed though that it looked like it was his leg. So I was like, well, we'll, see how we we gave him some Tylenol I think is what it was and uh, to see how he's doing overnight so 
Um, I he he ate, which was a good sign. When my other dog got hurt, he wouldn't eat like yeah. at all. Yeah. Like he was not interested in like yeah. anything that would like sustain life. Mm. But Tucker was eating, and I could get him to drink. So I was like, okay, well that's a good sign. So I woke up periodically throughout the night, and I'd go out and just see where he was because he was just in the yard. I had Nora and him separated, so she wouldn't annoy him. And he's just sitting out there, like, laying in the same spot. I woke up again later. I walked out there, and he's gone. I'm like, oh, where is he? You know, it's like 5.30 in the morning. I'm like, where where did he go? So I'm, like, looking around, and he just, like, you know, I built that underground doghouse. And he just, like, walks out of his doghouse, and he just, like, looks over at me. And I was like, oh, thank God. Like, he was he's good enough. Like, yeah. you know, I'm still thinking, is he going to die? Like, c- because of my other dog, Chance, I, like, anytime yeah. I, one of my, like, yeah. beloved dogs like, injured, I'm like, they're going to die. Like, it's, yeah. it's over. It, I knew it was too good to be true. <laughs> it's, but when I saw him walk out of his little dog house that I built him, I was like, okay, he thought that I'm feeling good enough to go home to yeah. where where it's soft because I have a bunch of good. bedding and Sweet stuff in there boy. for him. So he's walking around like he's in like, I don't know, I was out there feeding him and he seems normal. I, and so I'm like, I'm confused. I don't. I don't understand. And it was his back leg, which can be like the maybe he tore his ACL because it's a very mm-hmm. common dog injury. And they, Nora and him play so hard. Mm-hmm. So it, I, I, I have no clue what happened, but he's oh, like okay. just he's... acting more normal. He's a very sensitive dog. He's very loyal. Mm-hmm. He knows what he's supposed to be doing. Uh, and yeah, he. I think he when he gets scared of stuff, or like if something happens to him, like he's never really been injured ever. Yeah. If if something happened to him that hurt him slightly and he got scared at the same time, mm-hmm. uh, I think he just like yeah. mentally just like, well, yeah. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. And so he just gets like, he doesn't want to move. He just wants to, that's the only thing I can come up with. I, I have mm-hmm. no idea, but he seems to be acting pretty normal. So um, I'm glad he's okay. I'm glad yeah, that it was he, terrifying. I'm glad that he went to the underground doghouse for comfort that's what gave me help i walked out yeah and i thought i, I thought he was going to be gone i was like where are you going he's like because i didn't know if he, he was still he, sick he, or he what went out in the wilderness yeah he's like i'm done i'm going to go out there so i was like gonna go look for him goodbyes. while oh, i start buddy. walking he just pops his head out of the doghouse hey, like I'm, I'm, okay. Okay. I'm okay i'm okay I'm so i just okay. sat i went under the doghouse with him just sat out there like slept out there for like 30 minutes and i just was petting him he just seemed normal-ish so i don't know all so right. i think he's fine i'm gonna go back Very home good. after this and just see how he's doing but okay Poor so that was stressful all right but it gave me hope i came across a uh post on the life hacks subreddit of mm-hmm. a 72 year old guy he was turning 72 and he had just a bunch of life advice and i was like man jordan's gonna eat this up so i oh, didn't, yeah. I didn't use all of them but i used some of them so check these out these are all just little short little pithy things work on a passion project even for just 30 minutes a day it compounds Mm-hmm. That's so true. It really is. I like this one too. Working from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. isn't productivity, it's guilt. <laughs> That's a such a good saying right yeah. there. <laughs> uh to be really successful, become useful. Yeah. That especially like it when you uh you know, we were talking about the other day, Home Depot allegedly has a price match guarantee. On their website, yeah. Except for none of the employees. No, they never been informed. Yeah, I was complaining about that to Kelly the other day. I was like, you know, to them it's just a job, and it's like if somebody asks them to do some, to figure something out, they can just say, no, we don't do that. Yeah, they don't have to think about it. Yeah, because it's like I, I have no aspirations for this to be anything more than just a job I do for a few bucks and then I quit. But in my head, I think, okay, if I was going to go work somewhere, my goal would always be a manager to, here to, to move up in the company. Oh, every day, Something. every yeah. action you do, yeah. you would think I'm moving up doing this. Yeah. Like I will be the leader of this company. And it's not like not even like if I wanted to, but just yeah, it's just so your brain has something to like. So it's not just like menial labor. Yeah, that's, that's always what I told Sarah. I said if I ever got a got a job like this, yeah, I, like the mentality would just be absolutely different from yeah. everybody else. Yeah, like not necessarily everybody, but most yeah. everybody that you see at these places. Yeah. I'd be like, I just feel like it'd be easy to stand out. I don't know. They would be, they would be like, no, seriously, you have to work here for six months before we can consider you. All right, but just keep me in mind. Keep me in yeah, mind. Yeah, exactly. I'm bothering them every day. Hey, I'm ready to move up. I'm ready to do more. I've proven, you know. Yeah. Anyways. No, they would make exceptions in the company yeah. <laughs> for somebody like that. 
I mean, I'm, I'm thinking if I ran a place like that, if you had somebody who was super motivated and was doing a good job, like, oh yeah, I don't want to lose this person. No. I'm if I got a job at Home Depot, day one I would oh, be yeah. memorizing every product exactly. in every aisle. Like I would take yeah. it home, I would study it, I would look every single item. I don't know why I've always had in my head like if everything ever went to complete dirt, H, H I would go work at Publix. Yeah, I don't know why that's <laughs> yeah. always been in my head. Mine's always Home Depot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think just because everybody seems nice there. Like, I yeah. know the employees at my local Publix, and uh, it just seems like a, a pleasant place to work. I like that they they, they take your – they offer to take your that stuff out nice. to your car for you and stuff. It just seems nice. Like, houses in need of repair, problems usually don't fix themselves. Mm -hmm. Don't hold on to your great idea until it's too late. Mm -hmm. People aren't thinking about you as much as you think. That mm -hmm. goes back to our Christian meme from earlier about trying to get your house all clean. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Being grateful is a cheat sheet for happiness, especially today. Choose your own path or someone will choose it for you. So th this guy is a writer. Like, he writes that's books. What, that's he what I, that's what I, I mean, There's no too. question. Yeah. The expense of something special is forgotten quickly. The experience lasts a lifetime. And I, I always think about that. Now especially, I, didn't, I wasn't always this way, but as I've gotten better with money, as I've gotten... Mm -hmm even just in the last like a couple of years or yeah. or so i think about that now i'm like after i spend this money in six months will i still use this thing and will i have forgotten what it cost me like because yeah. in, if in six months i'm still thinking ah, boy that was kind of expensive i shouldn't buy it yeah yeah don't say something to yourself that you wouldn't say to someone else <laughs> mm-hmm Feeling good, this is my favorite one. Feeling good is better than that third slice of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Three donuts is not Three what I Three donuts. <laughs> we'll explain that story later. Nobody gets to their deathbed and says, I'm sorry for trying so many things. There are always going to be obstacles in your life, especially if you go after big things. Mm -hmm. The emptiest head rattles the loudest. <laughs> <laughs> Try to spend 12 minutes a day in quiet reflection, meditation, or prayer. Try new things. If it doesn't work out, stop. At least you tried. Mm -hmm. You can't control everything, so focus on what you can control. And then the final note he wrote was, if you're lucky enough to get up to my age, the view becomes more clear. It may seem like nothing good is happening to you or just the opposite. Both will probably change over time. Mm -hmm. And I found that to be true in my life. If there's, a, if I'm, especially if I'm having a day that I'm just like, nothing's everything going just, right. yeah, everything just feels. I just have to remember, I, the, the, in two days, I, I, it'll things will feel normal again. Yeah, exactly. So I just got to suck it up through this for a little bit, and then it'll feel better. And that's hard. That's that's hard for me to do. I, I like to control my brain state, and so when it feels kind of out of my control. Mm hmm. It's tough, but anyways, th those gave me hope. Those those gave me hope too. All of those little little snippets could each be an episode of the If Then podcast. There you like, go. Just take the there you go. Just, I'll copy. Those to me. I'll copy this over to you. All right, uh, Jordan's got a recommendation for us. I do. Week. I'm the only one with a recommendation today. It's the first time ever. I recommend something I've recommended in the past. I'm pretty sure, but gymnastics rings. Mm. The most perfect, if I had to recommend one fitness thing, don't get all this random crap. Gymnastics rings, the most perfect form of a tool for fitness. You, There's so many different handholds. You can shift like this. You can shift like this. You can shift like this. Mm -hmm. You can shift, go overhead. You can go out. You can do push-ups with it. You can go deeper with push-ups to yeah. like get that stretch, but mm -hmm. then also get that strength. There's just so many different ways to use the stuff. And it's good with core strength because, uh, you, you know, you're not just on a fixed bar. You're having to, you're monitoring both right. arms. Yeah. It's, I mean, if you've never done a pull up on rings versus pull up on bars, it, it, yeah, it's, it's like not it's even the same thing. thing. It's a different thing. I, I prefer doing it with rings than, than a yeah. bar. It feels more natural. Yeah. For some reason, even though it's yeah. not more natural right. because if you're I know. climbing a tree, it's all stationary. Right. So it's a confusing. Right. Um, but yeah, just just the the uh, tensing of. I've done exercises 
methodically with both, with standard mm -hmm. stuff and with gymnastics rings, and you get 100% more strength and bang for your buck when you're doing the gymnastics rings, and I really think it's because of the balance of everything. If you're doing push-ups on gymnastics rings, the balance of that, you can go deeper with them. Yeah. Uh, the, the the balance factor, you're using so many different little tiny muscles that you wouldn't use before for balance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people on online talk about building muscle. Like, it's like building muscle. I, I think it's like for aesthetics and, or whatnot. But if I tweeted, I would tweet this. <laughs> that uh, s strength and athletic ability is greater than mu building muscle. Yeah. Like that's a, yeah. it's like a byproduct. Right. You're not, your goal isn't, I want to be ripped. I right. want to build muscle. It's like the, the goal is to, I want to be useful. Right. Like I want to be, I just, I, I want to be, I want to see a hard thing and know that I can do it. Yeah. I saw a guy and I actually retweeted this I and I don't retweet stuff, but I retweeted this. It was a huge like bodybuilder guy who was swinging an ax and trying to chop some wood, like had muscle, like huge muscle trying to chop a piece of wood for firewood and like couldn't do it very effectively at all. And so I tweeted, retweeted and said like, this is what this guy is doing wrong. And it's not about the muscle. It's about the technique of this, it's the athleticism, yeah. this is the mind body connection. This guy doesn't have it. Yeah. I didn't say that, but like, that's what I meant. Uh, and it's just that mentality of, build muscle, build muscle, build muscle, but it's not useful. I can't right. do anything. I can't even swing a right. hammer. I can't swing an axe. Right. I can't do anything. Right. That but stuff naturally... I just, I just yeah. get ripped at the gym doing right. bicep curls. It's like, it's totally pointless. Well, that's why, you know, I, have I mentioned that on here or not? Maybe we were just talking about it, but I had been doing that book that you... The, the, yeah, the Convict. Workout, the, the Convict Conditioning. You got me for Christmas. I've been doing the workouts there, but I've, I've shifted now. I'm not really doing that anymore. Now that the playground is done, I literally just go down and do the monkey bars and just make sure to do it at least once once a day mm -hmm. just to like let my body know like hey this is a thing that i might ask of you once per day yeah you know and i can already tell it's making me stronger and i don't know if it's because i feel stronger or it's like i just feel more confident doing it but yeah, either way it feels good yeah you know and then and you can slowly shift into um you know to to you know personally for me it's like i want to it, it, i want to be able to have like ridiculous grip strength mm -hmm. because when you're, I've done enough physical manual labor in my life to know with the exercises that are important for real life. Yeah. And the only thing that I've seen that really comes close to that, going back to the gymnastics rings, is the gymnastics yeah. rings. Because when you're holding those, when you're swinging a hammer, you're swinging in different oh. angles. You're swinging, and you really feel that in your yeah, arm, and you're true. holding it in different positions. With the gymnastics rings, you're gripping that in all different right. ways. Right. And I think that's why it feels more natural. It's not so natural to climb like a tree. Like, yeah. we don't do that very often, even back in the day. Yeah. But, you know, you're holding a tool. You're gripping it in a different way. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you're equalizing it by doing it with your left hand as well with, uh, mm -hmm. with the gymnastics rings. That's what I'm... That's what I think and i buy that i don't have any problems you know i could work all day you know and not get sore and be able to do it the next day um and i really attribute that to uh and a lot of people think that is this recommend yeah i re would recommend this too even if you have a physical manual labor kind of job i i would say in like carpentry or something like that there is a, di like a lot of people will say, oh, well, that's me working out. It's like, it, not really. It's not like you need to do something else to supplement the imbalances that you're getting from doing the same repetitive motions uh -huh. over and over and over and over and over again. Uh -huh. uh, or from what I've seen from people that I know. Yeah. They, you know, you start to get hurt. You start yeah. to feel that you yeah. can't do what you could do. And it's because there's just a certain, you, you know, human beings are like, we're not rigid beings. We, we are like uh, pieces of paper where if you hold this, we're like books. If you have a book and you hold a book, it's perfectly flat. Uh -huh. But if you have a book and you like just stupidly set it like this, on on mm -hmm. something for a long time mm -hmm. and it's a soft cover book mm -hmm. when you pull it away it's going to hold that shape 
it won't ever go back. You're going to have to sit on it and bend it the other way for a couple of days and then it might mm -hmm. go back to normal. Yeah. But that's like people, like if you do the same thing every single day, hunched over on your phone, right. you literally start to take the shape of how yeah. you stand, yeah. how you sit all day at the computer. Yeah. You take that shape, you stand up. Oh, I have scoliosis. I have this, mm -hmm. I have that. Yeah, it's because you... It's because you trained yourself. But just like a piece of paper, you can bend it back the other direction mm -hmm. and then you can get straight again. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying with like, you be aware of what you're doing in everyday life. Just think about the shape that you are taking every day. Mm -hmm. And that is your shape. Yeah. If you do pull-ups, it makes you go straight, stand up straight. Uh, different knee exercises and stuff like that. It, you're you're training yourself doing the supplemental stuff is you're training yourself to take on another shape you're you spend all your life doing this train yourself to bend back like that so you yeah. can be maybe here you <laughs> yeah. know what i mean instead yeah. of here yeah. when you're 70 yeah you know you see these these poor old people at the grocery store and the, and they're just like literally hunched over like this and it's like man like yeah. what happened yeah was it an injury or was it just maybe they have a manual labor job forever where yeah. that's that was the position right. they held themselves in for, right. for that long Could so be. you never know but gymnastics rings will solve your problems i wonder if my gymnastics rings that i have in the garage if i could put them out on the playground if they're we need out, to build something outdoor ones we need, it needs to be higher like we I, i'm telling you we need to when, when you when we do when, when you put those things on the Oh, I, I bought I bought stuff for them last night. By the way, for what? F to put the rings up. Oh, you're talking about the yeah the, 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 the rock, rock climbing thing. Okay, sorry. Wait, what'd you what'd you buy for the? I got little like square plate uh, things, and then just like it's, it's very crew. heavy duty oh. carabiners, so I can just clip the rings to. Oh, to the to next the bridge. To the, yeah. On the bridge, under the bridge. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they're, they're, yeah. They're, they're small, so they won't, like from up here, you won't be able to see, and I'll be able to unclip them, so it won't be an eyesore. Oh, I that's just, easy enough. Because the, I see. the carabiners we were going to need, yeah. if I put them on the monkey bars, were going to be like seven-inch carabiners, and they were very expensive. It was cheaper yeah. just to get mounts, so I just did that instead. And okay. that, way, that way, they'll actually be secure. They won't be like swinging yeah. on the monkey bars. Nobody else cares about it. I don't know. Is this in the episode? Are we done? Yeah, we're done. I but what I was saying is down there the <laughs> when it's done in my mind is after we build like an adult like gym like pull up bar where that's really high yeah. so that you can actually wrap uh the the straps on and have the the rings on the strap so it's hanging like 3 feet would be good because yeah. then it, it is like you're moving around a lot more. Yeah. It's it's not so rigid cuz it's not like right up close next to the bar so yeah. you can't really move. That would just be cool. Yeah, I would, would love cool. that. That would be cool. Anyways, I guess that's the end of the episode. Thank you guys for watching. We'll talk to you next time. Hopefully that ending wasn't too boring. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>